Could you briefly introduce yourself to the audience? Um, so my name is Tomasz Petrzyczyk. Um, I'm doing quite a few different things. So um, I'm doing a lot of F# -sharp programming, and I'm part of the F# -sharp Works Control thing, where we do training. Um, I'm also a researcher, so I work in the Alan Turing Institute on tools for data science and making data access more transparent. And uh, my my most recent interest that is relevant for the conference is history and philosophy and programming. Could you could you describe what you talked about? Yeah, so I did a talk. Um, the, the title is "Would Aliens Understand Lambda Calculus?" and um, it's sort of a, a cover cover up for talking about about uh, history and philosophy of mathematics because. Um, when you say, would aliens understand lambda calculus, how do you even go about answering this? Sure. You can be like, well, yes, lambda calculus is this eternal truth, so obviously aliens would find it. Yeah. But that's the sort of naive platonist, as, as philosophers of mathematics would tell you. Um, so um, I talked about a couple of ideas that you can actually use to sort of look at this with some more rigorous methods. Yeah. Would aliens understand like the calculus? Well so so the the one the one thing that I sort of referred to um, is this idea of embodied mind, embodied cognition, where um, basically the only way we can understand mathematics is by looking at how we do mathematics with our brain. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that a lot of the mathematics we do is really sort of arises from dealing with real stuff in the world. Sure. So, um, for example, numbers, you can understand them as collections of objects, and there is actually sort of scientific cognitive evidence that we do it and we construct metaphors. Um, and so what I was talking about is sort of partly what could be the, the, the physical constraint for having something like lambda calculus. And there's a couple of things. So one is you need to have, um, or, or sort of set theory and logic is grounded in, in what they call um, container schema, where like if I have something in my hand and I put my hand sort of in my pocket, then the thing that I have in my hand is in my pocket. Sure. And that's like a physical experience that we use to understand sets and, and mathematics. So you need to have some sort of boundary. Um, and I, um, I had a bunch of different aliens, and people can watch the talk uh, to, to learn about all of them. But if you had aliens that sort of live in a very chaotic, gaseous universe, where maybe sort of you're sort of floating freely um, in some chaos, then you wouldn't really have this, this clear boundary. Like you can't say something is inside something. Sure. Or um, if you um, if you watch the movie Arrival, then um, the aliens there they have this sort of circular language which changes their perception. And in the movie it's sort of fun because it changes their, their perception of time, but they don't have this directionality. And then yeah. in lambda calculus, that's what we use for reduction. So when you have evaluation or reduction, that has this direction. So if you didn't have direction, well then maybe you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to have lambda calculus. Sure. So could you could you speak uh, about the data science work that you're doing? You, you, yeah. you said more transparent, and I wonder what you mean by yeah, that. Yeah, well, so the, the, the sort of core idea there is that when you see a chart in online newspapers, um, if, if, it's, if it's a reputable source, then they'll tell you source OECD or sure. World Bank. But you can't really reproduce it unless you're a pretty good programmer, typically. Yeah. So the idea is to build some tools that would make it really, really easy to grab some data from some data source, uh, do basic transformations, and embed the visualization in the page together with the, with the fully reproducible script. And it's, it's partly sort of motivated or inspired by um, Hive providers in FSAR, which is this really nice way for accessing data and, and writing simple code to just 
do very trivial, trivial things. Yeah. So um, I've been working on a project called the Gamma, and uh, you can find it online, that implements similar idea, but in a browser, so you can use it as a JavaScript package that you just sort of use, and then you can, you can run these little scripts that, that um, you embed to produce visualizations, and you can let readers edit them as well. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, thank you very much for talking with me today. Thanks. It yeah. was a pleasure. Yeah.